American B-52 bombers are now in the Middle East. And folks, Iran isn't happy. But that's not the biggest story here. Get yourself ready for one mind-blowing detail. All right, folks, let's get into this one. This story is unbelievable, and not because the story itself stands as it does, but it is a detail that nobody is going to talk about because it is one that is very difficult to detect. Now, I want to simply say this. I am recording this. Literally, it is a day before the United States election, and I want everybody to understand that some of the story that I'm talking about is directly related to a series of political maneuvers by the Biden regime in a last-ditch effort to maybe give some credibility to the foreign policy uh, prowess of Kamala Harris, which she has none. I want to just simply say that this is easy to see through, but the big part of this story has nothing to do with any of that. And this is the reason why I've chosen to make this video, especially a week before you're actually watching it, because I'm not here to be the first one to the breaking news story. I'm here to provide some analysis for you that I hope you're going to be able to recognize that very few people will see. And I think that this is very valuable as it relates to Bible prophecy. It's valuable as it relates to the geopolitics of the region. And it is very valuable as it relates to your general understanding of what's happening in Israel and everything that relates to Israel. So this is some pretty heavy stuff. And I want you guys to catch this. It's pretty remarkable. Now let's go over the article. This here is in Times of Israel, and the article title is Iran Slams Destabilizing Presence as U.S. Sends B-52 Bombers to Region. And the subtitle of this says, Tehran says it won't be deterred, vows definite and decisive response to Israeli airstrikes, but expresses support for ceasefire efforts in Gaza and Lebanon. And folks, that in and of itself is a complete joke, and that is part of the one detail that a lot of people aren't going to notice, but I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure you do notice it and that you understand it because it is a significant detail. And once again, it isn't always the detail that's being included. Sometimes it's the detail that's not being included, and you get a little bit of both of those things in this story. So let's dig right into it. The article says this, Tehran, Iran, Iran's foreign ministry spokesman, Ismail Bahahi, on Monday criticized what he called the United States' destabilizing presence after the deployment of B-52 bombers in the region. Here's his quote, we have always believed that the presence of America in the region is a destabilizing presence. By the way, he says this at a news conference, and he goes on to say when he's questioned about the deployment, he says it will not deter Iran's resolve to defend itself. That's his exact quote, folks. And this is such an interesting thing, considering the fact that Iran has nothing to defend itself from. They are the aggressors, and in reality, they have warranted the response that is coming from Israel, and everything that's coming to them, they deserve a lot more than what they're actually getting. And there's a lot to be said about this, but let's go on to the next paragraph. It says the U.S. military announced on Saturday the deployment of heavy B-52 bombers to the Middle East as a warning to Iran, which has vowed to respond to Israeli strikes on its military sites on October the 26th. Weeks earlier, the Islamic Republic launched some 200 ballistic missiles at Israel on October 1st, sending most of the population rushing to bomb shelters and safe rooms. The assault, Iran's second direct attack on Israel after a drone and missile strike in April, caused relatively minor damage to military bases and some residential areas in Israel and killed a Palestinian man in the West Bank. Iran said its October 1st attack came in retaliation for the killing of Tehran-backed terror leaders and an Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps commander. Now, I just want to simply say this because I think this is important. You need to recognize the propagandizing that's going on on behalf of Iran. You also need to recognize some of the propagandizing that's happening on behalf of the United States of America. I believe that the sending of these B-52s is yet another attempt by the Biden regime to slow down what may be a very aggressive response from Israel. And actually what they don't realize is that they are in essence going to enable Israel to behave more aggressively than they were in the first place simply because what 
the United States of America is doing right now is actually far more inflammatory than just simply allowing Israel to do what it was planning to do. And this is the case for many reasons. You don't just put big, huge airships like B-52s uh, in a region without making a statement. And the statement that they are making to Iran is bring it. The statement that they're making to Iran is we are forcing you to respond by putting on a face that you might not even want to put on. And even though you might be scared to death and you're thinking about ways to slow down your response, we are going to force it out of you in an attempt to not only destabilize the region, but in an attempt to possibly throw off the minds of voters in the United States of America. And this is kind of a big deal because this is not the type of thing you really want to be playing with, okay? And that's kind of important, but we're not even getting into the critical detail here yet, which we'll get into in just one second. The article goes on to say at least four soldiers were killed in Israel's airstrikes, which also caused limited damage to a few radar systems, officials said at the time. Iranian media also reported that a civilian had been killed. Efforts by Iran to downplay the attack faltered as satellite photos and multiple reports in global media showed Israel strikes had crippled Iran's ballistic missile production by destroying at least a dozen solid fuel mixers and disabled crucial air defenses protecting major energy installations. And folks, I just want to say this because this is important. It did a lot more than that. It disabled many of the unpublicized nuclear facilities that Iran had. And what it also did was it completely eliminated Iran's ability to be able to la uh, launch any large-scale attacks with any level of consistency. Now, they may still have some missiles available at their disposal, but the reality of it is they're very limited as to what they can do with it, and it is creating a shockwave of absolute panic amongst many of the leaders in Tehran. And I think that's an important thing to say. And it's something that people aren't saying. It's something that people aren't talking about, but it is a very important uh, detail. Now, look what the article goes on to say. It says, Bahai said Iran's response would be definite and decisive. That's a very, very strong statement to be making. But look what it goes on to say. He added that Iran supported all initiatives and efforts to push for a ceasefire in Gaza and Lebanon, where Israel is at war with the iron-backed Hamas and Hezbollah terror groups, respectively. By the way, I want to make myself very, very clear. If Iran is saying that they are supporting all initiatives and efforts in order to create a ceasefire effort in Gaza and Lebanon, they are saying two things that you're not hearing about. Two very important details. Number one, they are conceding to the fact that they have no resources anymore to effectively fight the war against the Israelis in these areas. That's the first thing that they're saying. The second thing that they're doing is they are seeking to signal any in any way possible anybody who is willing to interfere with the efforts that Israel is making to stabilize the region by preventing any of these attacks from happening in the future. In other words, what Iran is doing is Iran is making an all call for anybody else who's willing to be a proxy. But the type of proxy they're looking for here is not the type of traditional proxy that they have enlisted with the function of uh, Hezbollah or Hamas or some uh, terrorist organization. They are now looking for a proxy that is in the form of a reputable state that will actually choose to use the delineations that are created by uh, some form of a an effort under the diplomatic corps to be able to stop things as quick as they can. What Iran is doing in essence is they are seeking out the international community to give them a hand in being able to restock, to rebuild, and to regroup in order to destroy Israel and yes, dare I say, to destroy the United States of America. This is a very, very important thing to bring Bring up, and it's something that I need you guys to pay very special attention to. By the way, the theory that I'm throwing out here, which really isn't a theory, it's a statement of fact, it's simple observation, really is confirmed when you look at statements made like this from Tehran. Look at this. It says, uh, the article goes on to say, on Monday, Iran's president, Masoud Pezeshkhen, said Iran had missiles so Israel wouldn't dare attack us. It's kind of funny how that's an uh, interesting thing. Iran has missiles so Israel wouldn't dare attack us. Now, I, what I do think is funny is for as moderate as this man, who's the president now, seems or appears to be, there's no moderation 
separation in the approach that he's actually taking. And this is something that we've actually talked about. The only difference here is that Israel is a lot smarter than Iran in that Israel will not respond to the emotional ploy that's being made in Iran. Rather, Israel is waiting for some kind of a tangible physical attack to be made so that they can move forward in being able to respond the way that they need to respond in being permanent in the approach that they're taking when it comes to this uh, specific circumstance. I think it's very important that we recognize that. Look what it goes on to say. It says, during the news conference, uh, Bahai said Iran's official position against changing the nuclear doctrine and pursuing atomic weapons remained the same. In other words, what they're saying is we're going to keep going for it. But look what it goes on to say. Citing a recent speech by Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, Bahai said the Islamic Republic would be equipped with everything necessary to defend itself. Iran, which directly attacked Israel with missiles and drones for the first time in April, has been dealing with its own problems at home as its economy struggles under the weight of international sanctions and it has faced for years of widespread multiple protests. Iran has long threatened Israel with destruction and called to wipe out the Jewish state. Folks, this has been such an interesting and telling article in that there are a few things that many people are not going to see because it takes some reading in between the lines and quite frankly doesn't really take a lot of that because it is literally on its face if you will pay attention. This is what's happening, folks. Iran has been brutally crippled. They have been literally removed from every element of possible thought of security they could have. Their leaders are running scared. Uh, Khomeini is uh, sick and he's hiding somewhere. They're already talking about regime change or uh, uh, let's just talk about not even regime changes, we would call it, but they're talking about changing over their leaders, not for the purpose of moving or modifying the mindset of the regime, but rather carrying it on, right? Literally bringing it into a younger generation and Khomeini's son is the one that is the candidate for it, yet there's a bunch of civil uh, disobedience uh, over this issue. There's a lot of uh, fighting between factions regarding this, and it, it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem as, as Iran is beginning to fall apart. But this is the thing that I need you to pay attention to because this is more important than anything else. Iran is scared. They are doing everything in their power to try to enlist the international community to bring help using diplomatic channels in hopes that they will be able to have more time bought for them. They have already signaled that they are willing to utilize their energy resources in an attempt to bring somebody in who might have a larger and more forbearable voice. They are already at the point where they are entering into the possibility of creating agreements with people who tend to lean towards their way of thinking in order to be able to set up a wall of defense for themselves to keep them from being completely destroyed. And perhaps one of the most incredible details that nobody is talking about centers around the fact that Iran is preventing themselves from going into self-implosion mode. Iran is getting desperate, and folks, this is where Ezekiel 38 comes into play, and this is where passages like this become really significant because Iran has, in essence, put itself in a position where it has admitted to the whole world that it needs a big daddy by its side to not only protect its interest, but to give it the time necessary to be able to regroup, to participate in attack for a later day. Nasrallah is dead. All of the leaders of Hezbollah are gone. The person that was supposed to replace him is dead. It's very likely the new person that they announced is about to die. You should have seen the fear in his eyes when he was uh, making his address earlier. It was unbelievable to see it. The destabilization of the region is becoming more and more significant as it relates to southern uh, Lebanon. Heck, in Beirut, it's going crazy. If you look at the areas in the Mediterranean off the coast of Lebanon, things are getting crazy over there. They're picking up in very aggressive ways ways. Uh, Israel is literally putting everybody on notice that's seeking to go its way towards them, and they have put the Palestinian Authority on notice. 
of course, Hezbollah is gone. Hamas is gone. There's no hope for any of these terrorist organizations that want to do this. Fatah is already signaling that they, they don't want anything to do with this, at least in the current moment. Islamic Jihad is uh, in many ways taking a different turn. And actually, we're even seeing indicators from Turkey as basically saying we need to take a break right now because our aggressive stance towards Israel isn't going to benefit anybody. And quite frankly, they're at the point where they are now going to the United Nations in some sort of hope that the United Nations is going to place some kind of a sanctioning damnation on Israel. And Israel is saying, we've been there and uh, we've done that. Who cares? Bring it on. It doesn't matter. All of that to say, Iran is in trouble. And the one thing, the one thing that nobody is discussing right now is this is Iran's dying request. This is Iran basically saying, we are no longer the people that we thought we were. We realize that we're in grave danger. We know we're in trouble. Those of us that remain don't necessarily want to die. And we are hoping that we can enlist the help of somebody like Russia to assist us in being able to live to fight another day. And folks, that's exactly what's going on. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because the presence of B-52s may be the very thing that was needed to solidify the relationships that Iran was looking for in order to give itself the ability to survive another day. With B-52s now in the region, what we are actually seeing is we are seeing a new infrastructure forming amongst some of these nations that were referred to as associated with the access of evil to actually create a protective little insulator for Iran to allow Iran to be able to function in a way where they will not be completely abolished so that they can lick their wounds, regroup, and choose to do the very things that they need to do. Now, this is interesting because if you know the Bible and you know what Bible prophecy says and you understand passages like Ezekiel 38, then you will understand this is falling right into what the Bible says should be expected to happen. And it will get to the point where Iran in its desire to want to utilize diplomatic channels in order to give itself a, a, a chance to regroup for another day or another hour or another year, you will find that a condition of peace, yes, it will be a false peace, but a condition of peace is not only already being proposed, but it is actually being aggressively pursued. And the reason why it's being aggressively pursued is because Iran knows that if it continues going down the road that they're going, that not only will they fall apart and not only will they implode, but every last leader associated with everything that's happened against Israel is going to drop dead in one way or another. And I think that this is becoming so important to so many people that are in Tehran that a whole new world, a whole new way of thinking, a whole new mindset is being approached. And folks, I'm here to tell you this. This is the thing that's between the lines that nobody is seeing, that nobody's talking about. We are watching the formation of the alliances that we know will be solidified in reading the book of Ezekiel 38. We know about Gog, presumably the leader of Russia, who will lead a conglomerate of nations to attack Israel. And when it happens, Israel will be absolutely shocked because Israel is going to look at this and go, what's going on? To the point where Saudi Arabia is going to say, what the heck happened to you guys? What entered your mind that you would ruin a perfectly good thing? Why in the world are you doing this? So we know what's going to happen, and we even have an idea of what that hook might be, the natural resources that they're seeking out, all of these different tools that they're going after. Israel is growing and growing and growing. Its national GDP is growing. When you start to look at its local GDPs, depending on what area you're actually looking at, it is in some cases, especially in the, Zil the Silicon Valley portion of Israel, you're seeing it quadruple its GDP compared to the national average. And when you start looking at the economic variables that are contributing to the well-being of Israel, you are beginning to uncover the fact that there are natural resources that Israel never did uncover until now, and those natural resources are going to greatly contribute not only to its defense infrastructure, it's going to contribute to its economic welfare, and it's going to contribute to its general protection of her citizens. And folks, all of this 
is happening while there's a discussion in Israel on the Temple Mount regarding the rebuilding of the temple, when you're having conversations about openly and freeing, free, uh, you know, freely praying on the temple, and you're beginning to see even the Islamic factions that exist on the temple that function as the waqf of this area are not even getting aggressive as they used to be. There's a lot of things that they're allowing to happen more and more and more and more, and we're seeing this stuff manifest in ways that we've never seen it manifested before. And all of this is because God said that it would happen. We are watching this stuff take place. Now, does this mean that Jesus is coming tomorrow? No. Could he come tomorrow for the church? Could he rapture the church? Absolutely. Could the second coming happen tomorrow? Absolutely not. Lots of things have to happen in order for that to take place. But the rapture of the church could happen at any moment because we're already seeing the stage being set. We're already watching people change things. We're watching people maneuver things and completely manipulate things. And what's happening here is remarkable. What's happening is something that we have never seen before. We're watching God do this incredible thing. And I can tell you right now that as God is moving the hearts of kings, as God is beginning to change the positions of people's minds, and as God is beginning to move the nations while they're raging, we continue to see evidence of the fact that God's word is true. And folks, with all of this, this massive powder can Egg that's getting ready to explode, you can know from the very depths of your heart that God is good and he's faithful and he's with you and he's protecting you and he's watching over you and he will continue to sustain you. And the more you continue to invest in seeking him, believing what he has to say, studying his word and looking for these hidden lines, basically, these, these hidden messages that are in between the lines, which really aren't so hidden because they're blatant in God's word, you're going to be blessed because as you do your best to show yourself approved, being a, a, a faithful workman, studying the word of God, your mind and your heart is going to open. And folks, the peace that you will experience is greater than any peace that you've ever had before. Why? Because in the midst of the insanity, God says, I want to give you peace. I want to help. I want to help you. I want to strengthen you. I want to build you up. That's the faithfulness of the God we serve. And folks, this is the world in which we live. God is good and he's faithful and you can trust in him and you can rely upon him because he never, ever forsakes us and he always shows up. Understand, what we're watching in the Middle East is exactly what we should be expecting because it's what God told us what would happen and we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be excited about. Why? Because God is good. We're living in the last days. Christ could come at any moment, and the eternal life that's been promised to us is something beyond anything we could ever articulate, so much so that it would be illegal for us using the human language to describe it. God is faithful and he's good. Keep your eyes on him and watch him do great things. Trust him. He's doing amazing things. His word is true. Uh, these things are real, and God continues to show his faithfulness here and abroad. God bless you guys. Seek him. Wonderful things are about to happen.